management. We have, uh, for example, committed ourselves and our county uh, leaders that going into the future, for example, Nairobi, we cannot continue to have Dandora the way it is. Dandora cannot continue to be an ISO. Dandora cannot continue to be the health hazard that it is today. We have to manage waste in a way that we create value out of waste because there is value. There is value in waste. There is value that we can derive from it. We can generate uh, energy out of it. We can generate products out of it. We can... Uh, um, so, so there is huge value, and we want to make solid waste disposal and management a product, not a menace. So that, that's the direction we are looking at. And that is going to apply across all the, all the counties. And finally, your issue on, uh, on, on, on poverty and, and, and slums. Part of our program in managing housing in our big cities, we want to look at slums not as a problem, but as an opportunity. Because the proliferation of, of slums is because of the challenge of housing. There are many people who cannot afford the houses we are currently building. We have made a commitment that we are going to work on modern uh, methods of housing, better methods of housing, so that we can create houses that are affordable to Kenyans. And we are going to have two very important categories of housing, social housing and low-cost housing. And we have committed ourselves as Kenya Kwanzaa that the people living in slums, some of them pay as much as 3,000, 4,000. Some of the people living in informal settlements pay as much as six, seven thousand. We want to change so that the person who is paying six, seven thousand, they can pay eight thousand, and instead of it being rent, it should be mortgage. So that in fifteen years, twenty years, the house belongs to them. So um, we want to elevate, like the slum, the slum upgrading that is going on in Kibera. We want to move it to another level where we are doing it across the city and we're going to make funding uh, available. We're going to make the land available and we are also going to assist in making sure that we have uh, a cheaper technology that can give us cheaper houses or much more cost-effective houses. So that is our plan going into the future. And as we look at that, by the way, Sankara, we're not even looking at it as a problem to solve housing only. We're also looking at it as an opportunity to create jobs for the millions of young people that, are, that do not have jobs today. Asante sana. We're going to have uh, the last two people asking one one question, guys. Remember, those of us who are watching live from home, you can ask your question on social media. The hashtag, hashtag freedom is coming. Go to Dr. William Samuel Ruto Facebook, record a video and ask him a question and we're going to respond before the end of the program. Wangeshi. All right, two gonna, more, please. Okay, just two more questions because of time. Naswali Moja and Yemeko Exumwa, my youth, sir, and the involvement of the young people when it comes to leadership. Wana Sema, oh, is your offices in Ms. Jawa Zen in any but we've gone more on that. Uh, I'll have one guy seated right there to ask the question. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, uh, Vijana Oe, I'll be very brief because, Your Excellency, this is a very serious conversation, especially on leadership. My name is Omulo Jr. I'm a young person, a member of the National Youth Council, and a director in a party uh, that is led by Salem Davadi. Your Excellency, by extension, I've seen even in Kenya Kwanzaa, we have young people leading, over 70% in leadership. But today, most importantly, Your Excellency, we want to talk about uh, issues that are affecting young people in leadership. In this Kenyan government, Your Excellency, we have challenges. At the same time, we have uh, policies that are there. We have platforms that are there. We have institutions that are there, but they are not well coordinated. For example, Your Excellency, we have functions and programs that are 
uh, put under different ministries. The National Youth Council is put under the Ministry of ICT. We have the National Youth Service is put under the Public Service. All these youth functions are not well coordinated. And uh, giving you a good example one by one, in the National Youth Council, which is an act of parliament that is meant to coordinate that is meant to come up with the policy issues in Parliament, that is a link between the government and the youth, has not been given enough funding. Can you commit in your government that when you take over as president, you will give enough funding to the National Youth Council so that we can have elections of the youth at the world level, representatives that will be able to give a clear direction of the young people at the world level, at the constituency level, so that they can be absorbed at the county level as youth advisory board to be able to advise the county government on youth issues. Secondly, Your Excellency, the National Youth Service. The Nat National Youth Service has been receiving a lot of money from the government, but the National Youth Council the Service has not been able to provide revenue to the government. They have huge parcels of land, they have a lot of resources that if we are able to tap on, they can now regenerate revenue back to the government and create more employment to the young people. Can you give us a commitment that when you take over as President of the Republic of Kenya, you'll be able to transform the National Youth Service so that those who graduate they can be, have meaningful employment and they, we can tap on the resources that are there to create more employment. Finally, Your Excellency, all these issues to be coordinated and mainstream, can you assure us that we will have a standalone Ministry of Youth that is led by a young person that will be able to coordinate and mainstream all these issues together? Thank you, Excellency. And because we are three, I only want to give second to Kiare and Zach to say something. Uh, I'm Jumbo. Hechi, fiti. Kwa majina naitwa Kevin Kiere, ama wakili by profession. So just to affirm what Omolo has said. You find most of the time we have good policies that tend to favor the young people. And at the same time, the youth comprise the biggest component of our society today. But unapata at the end of the day, si vijana tunakaa kama marginalized. Actually, to make it even worse, iko kwa sheria ya kwamba vijana wao already ni marginalized. So to affirm to what Omolo is saying. You find that at the end of the day, these policies need to be monitored, they need to be implemented, and they need to be put in place. As much as we are doing that, we find that we have less representation kwa county assembly na kwa national assembly. Na saibli tunangalia, tunano wa mama wa mejipanga na two-thirds yao. Sisi tunataka utuashua kwa serikali yako, ya kwamba tutakuwa na two-thirds ya vijana. So that, in each and every ministry, in each and every parastatal, ata county administrators wanafaa kuwa vijana. Ama na mdagani? Sindio? Si wamba county admin wa wadamina wanafaa kuwa vijana? Sindio? So we need to see such policies, your excellency, to be put in place. And even our leaders in Kenya Kwanza, they should ensure that this is the first business in the first 100 days once you form government. So that, this issue of young people, 2027, to Sirudi hapa tukiongea mambo ya vijana, mashida. Sindio? Then, at the end, at, at each and every International Youth Day, Kindly, we need a presidential address. Wana tupatia, bide tumefikia on matters, youth implementation, and matters solving youth issues. Asante sana. Thank you very much, Kiarie, and uh, my good brother, Junior, Omolo. Uh, let me say uh, just three things so that I can allow my colleagues also to say something about, because it is the real elephant. You know, the participation of young people in our country, their contribution. And let me say the following. The first, our focus, you know, the, the reason why we have these challenges is because we need to go to the root cause. First, we must get good quality education for our young people. And we must open those opportunities for everybody. And we must allow everybody to pursue their talent. I'm speaking here as a parent. My son wanted to be a pilot. As a father, I didn't think, mm, pilot, no. So I, I told him, no, 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 you must go to university. So he said, okay, you want me to go to university? Okay, I'll go to university. So he went to university. I thought by the time he finishes four years in university, he'll have, he'll have forgotten about being a pilot. 
he came back after the degree. He brought the degree and said, okay, here is the degree. I want to be a pilot. <laughs> so I didn't have a choice. I had to look for a flying school for him, for them. I want to say we must allow every young person to pursue what their talent is. And the education we have should be sensitive. If one wants to do film, one of my daughters once wanted to do film, I refused because I thought I knew better. So this is uh, why we, we, need to, we, need, we need to look at that. So what I am saying is the following, that we must first have the right grounding for uh, our young people. Number two, all the opportunities that already the law gives to our young people, all the opportunities, whether um, in, through Agbo, we must make them accessible, whether through uh, other interventions, when the law says a certain percentage of uh, people must be represented in the uh, youth, must have a certain percentage in county assemblies, we must actualize in national assembly, we must actualize. In employment opportunities, we must actualize. So that at every stage, we are carrying the young people along. What are we doing as Kenya Kwanza? We have said what we will do in education, in health, and we have made our contribution in nominations. We commit that we will have a youth ministry. <laughs> That's number one. But beyond a youth ministry, beyond a youth ministry, youth issues cut across ministries. Youth issues cut across government. You cannot consolidate all the youth issues into a youth ministry. Do we agree? So additionally, I have made a commitment that there will be a young person to represent young people at the presidency and he will be a member of cabinet so that so that, that young person can speak authoritatively to every issue that comes to cabinet from every ministry and make sure that it is youth sensitive. Whether we, are, whether we are discussing road construction or we are discussing agriculture or we are discussing health, there must be, we must carry along the voice of the young people. And I have said we will have that young person at the presidency but sitting in cabinet so that the youth issues that cut across all other ministries are addressed. Let me finally maybe give uh, an opportunity to Musalia Mudabadi and then maybe Alfred to say... Uh, something I've forgotten. Uh, thank you. Um, maybe I'll just be a little bit personal. Um, I'm a living testimony of youth that can be nurtured. I became minister at the age of 28. And I became Kenya's minister for finance at the age of 33. So it is so clear that as we speak, it is the talent. And you are the ones who can get us out of a lot of challenges. Because as I say, I went personal. I was going that way because it's as if history is relieving itself. Right now, Kenya is in a boiler room. I don't know whether any of you have experienced what a boiler room is like. If you go there, it is so hot. And if there's no ventilation, you'll die and suffocate in there.
the Kenyan economy is in a boiler room. It's like a boiler room. The cost of living is biting. It's making it extremely difficult. Now, I bring this narrative because a few days ago, I saw a narrative that is saying the young people do not have a vote. The young people have no capacity to bring change. The young people have no capacity to give us the freedom that we are talking of, that freedom is coming. I know they are wrong, and we must prove them wrong. You, as the young people, must be at the forefront of redefining the destiny of our country. And to do so, come out and vote. Be the difference that Kenya requires. Now, when we talk of involvement in... Uh, in government and and so forth i want to say that in my closing remarks as i walked here when i was at the point of despairing i can see hope you are our hope you are kenya kwanza let us put the nation first there are challenges but there is nobody who is better placed to face those challenges than the younger people of this country. As Kenya Kwanza, we commit, if somebody held our hand before and pulled us from our youth to where we are, we are committing that as Kenya Kwanza, we shall do the same because there is no alternative. Thank you. Let me ask uh, my good brother Ndindi Nyoro, as a young person in our Kenya Kwanza uh, fraternity, he is very passionate about certain things.